Uh, I'm very happy to present you today um, Iñaki Avalos. Iñaki has, mm, has not been here for many, many years, so it's a pleasure to welcome him uh, after... Uh, uh, to welcome him back, exactly, <laughs> after a long period of absence. Um, I guess very little introduction we need about Iñaki, but I would just like to say that he is um, um, uh, architect and founder of the um, Iñaki and uh, I will say it very correctly, Senkevich, Avalos and Senkevich, um, architects, they are working all over the world with offices in Spain but also in China and, and in US. Um, they are doing uh, amazing work in um, understanding how architecture um, uh, can coexist with creating new kind of environments and landscapes. Um, they have been doing um, um, one of my favorite ones is the is the train station in Logroño but they have been working in many many in different projects what is interesting is that um, apart from the fact that he Iñaki is uh, combining not only professional um, practice but also academic work so he is um, the chair of the Department of Architecture at the GSD in the Harvard University and um, he has an amazing obsession that I share with him partially, which is an obsession on thermodynamics. Uh, I think that it I is... I, I, I'm pretty sure that uh, you have a lot of obsessions, but um, the work that you have been doing um, in, in your practice, but also the essays and all the academic research around um, um, the environment, that the thermodynamics and the impact that this can have in, in uh, buildings' behavior and, and interaction with the users and the environment, I think it is uh, very aligned and, and interesting um, work. So, um, little more to say, Nyaki, it's a pleasure to have you here today. Welcome and thank you. Thank you very much. Please help me welcome Anyaki. Thank, well, thank you. Thank you very much. This doesn't work, no? It's no, no. I, I will be. This, this is the one that works. No? You hear me? Do you hear me? No, it's okay. It's okay. I'm, I'm very tired. A. Hey, uh, Engines, monsters, books, and seven works. I, I counted yesterday the works, and they were five, so I added quickly two more. Um, hey, Jaime. <laughs> um, well, uh, first of all, thank you so much for inviting me. Uh, it's a pleasure to be in this new version of the YAC and to share the pleasure of being with Javier Peña, Jaime Cole, and other friends in in this room today and obviously with all of you. So, uh, uh, <coughs> I have to say that this title uh, is copied uh, from another I presented a few weeks ago in the Harvard Business School, uh, uh, which I, I did, I mean, and basically it's the same talk uh, with some changes, uh, a little bit less of self-promotion, but basically the same thing. So, uh, 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 it was uh, impressive uh, that everyone dressed, not like you, super cool, I mean super fashion, everyone was super uh, elegant and, and, and they were making uh, quite interesting uh, questions, 90% of them about the budget of the different projects, so it was really interesting. Uh, so This is the first thing, I mean, you know, I mean I, I brought this image professional, promotional uh, image of, of Renata and myself. Uh, I have to say that, uh, just to introduce Renata, that is the one that is obviously working in this moment while I'm, I'm, I'm doing this. Uh, she, uh, she's the 50% uh, uh, of, the, of, the, of the studio. Uh, uh, we do everything together. Uh, uh, we really do every project that, I mean, we obviously with our collaborators, but uh, every single decision is taken by us. And this is something that limits the scale and limits um, and makes us work like crazy. Uh, but it's a choice we made long, long time ago. Um, and, and she's an amazing designer. Is the only one I know that when she was 33 years old had uh, four built works exhibited at the MoMA, uh, 
when she was working as, as a principal, as an associate in Avalos Herreros. Uh, um, we have um, made, I mean, we love books, by the way. I know the digital, blah, 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 I love books. Um, uh, I really love books. Uh, I think books make a difference. And I like books because they are, uh, they, I don't like that much monographs, I like uh, theory, I like uh, to write essays because mainly they are, um, not mainly, they are almost exactly like projects. And you say it's a, a philosophical gender that um, doesn't need any formal logic. I mean, it's just about persuasion. It's just projecting ideas to the future and being able to persuade others that these ideas are better than the ideas that you had previously. And that's it. And this is exactly what we do with our projects, and we and all of you, uh, hopefully. And, and, and in a way, for us, it's, it's one of the most important activities we work in, and this is why we, both of us are uh, dedicated to, uh, with different intensities, because if not, it would be impossible to have an office, uh, to academia. Uh, Tower and Office was my PhD dissertation, The Good Life. I mean, it was about, obviously, uh, um, uh, the evolution of, 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 of the role of, the, of, of techniques on building systems. The Good Life is about the evolution of the uh, relationship among uh, um, the way we think and the way we live. And Atlas Pintoresco was about the relationship of nature and architecture, or uh, nature and the evolution of our technological culture. Uh, the three of them compose a kind of uh, uh, expanded um, essay on the legacy of modernism. Uh, it's completely subjective, but it's about uh, um, um, building systems, philosophy, nature, and, and the legacy of modernism. And the other one that you see, the thermodynamic uh, applied to high-rise mixed-use um, uh, prototypes, is, is more uh, a kind of, of more propositive, even if it is a manual, an, an academic book. Is, it has the ambition to project into the future new scenarios, uh, in, uh, trying to understand the interests of mixed-use, not as a, just as, as a kind of, of commercial uh, uh, interest in uh, promotion, but as, as something that uh, can really solve many of the problems we have in the contemporary city. The, the other, our, our uh, uh, first row is Avalos and Herreros, the second row is with uh, Renata, and our monographs or, or a combination of essays and, 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 and build work we, that in a way uh, is the format that we are trying to, to push forward. And, and to to reach kind of uh, interesting approaches and, and to avoid the coffee table mm, um, monograph uh, with a preface written by Galeano. Uh, um, and this is our, our offices. Our, I mean, the, the the way you have presented us is too optimistic. Uh, we work like crazy. We have a complete lack of structure. We are completely chaotic. We cannot really have a structure in this moment because we are both of us one term in, in Cambridge, in Boston. Uh, the other term, uh, Renata is coming more here. I try to come every month, like for four or five days. Uh, we have now more work in China under construction than in other parts. So we have the three schedules. We have begun to have in America Latina more. I mean, and it's is and we cannot have a real um, uh, practice we have an association in China with a studio that is working quite well and uh, we have like two employees uh, for us directly and 12 by, uh, by by a wonderful architect there and in Madrid we have now like seven uh, people and a couple more with grants and um, yeah and and in in Boston we have three and and that's all um, uh, we work, uh, we, I mean, we've never, uh, and Javier Peña knows it well, I mean, we never had in Avalos Herreros or in Avalos and Kevich more than 20 people. Never. Um, and 
First of all, because we couldn't pay more, <laughs> and secondly, because uh, we didn't want to have more. I mean, uh, in, the, in the moment you don't remember well the name of everyone in the office, you you are out of, I mean, out of the box. You you, you cannot do anything. So, uh, and we don't want to l to lose this sense of uh, being under control. Uh, <coughs> this said, these are the offices, more or less. A little bit old-fashioned, uh, like three years ago, two years, uh, and 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 the projects are organized as a combination of work of uh, in different steps of the three offices. Every every one uh, every office has a kind of more or less intervention, and depending on, on many circumstances, and and this is m m how we work. Um, and these are uh, our main collaborators are in thermodynamics. Uh, they are the only ones that we really begin with. When we were younger, we began with uh, structural engineers. I think that uh, we have lost the passion for structures. <coughs> and we obviously uh, take a lot of care, but I, we don't feel that it's so uh, uh, necessary. And many, many times, they, they to, to begin with uh, uh, structural engineers uh, uh, becomes a, a problem, becomes a limitation, a constraint. Too, too quickly. So this is my my impression after many years. Uh, but with uh, working with experts in thermodynamics or in physics or if you want in bioclimatism or whatever you sustainability, whatever you want to call it, uh, but we want to call it thermodynamics, uh, allow us to at least avoid to make uh, big mistakes at the beginning of our approach to design. And this is. Uh, uh, kind of important thing. It's true that in time we have, I mean, when I was studying and, and when uh, Renata was studying in Krakow, uh, we had to study physics and we, I had, I hated my teacher of thermodynamics. I still uh, have my, the two volumes of thermodynamics I had to study thick like this. Uh, uh, but, but now I think that it, it was really, it has become really successful uh, uh, and, and has allowed us to understand that uh, when we deal with form, we deal with matter and we deal with flow at the same time. Form, matter, flow is a kind of the equation that we don't, we want to take care of, especially as I said, in the first steps. Then, then we, we lose a little bit of, we, we try to forget and come back later. Well, these guys are these guys are really close friends and, and amazing uh, collaborators. And this is Boma now back. Uh, everyone in Barcelona knows them. They are close close friends of us from I don't know many many years ago, uh, especially Agustí and Xavier. And and we have uh, we communicate incredibly easily. So mm, this is why probably we don't need them so much now. <laughs> and and these are the this is the 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 uh, last thing that we have. Mm, made it has been a work of two years. Uh, this thick volume with the people of Actar. It says on thermodynamics, architecture, and beauty, uh, and in three languages. Which is uh, we are very proud of being able to uh, to publish a book uh, in in um, uh, to publish it with the three uh, languages more, more more spoken all over the world uh, all together. And, and it, it collects uh, mainly our our work from in Navalos and Kievich. Uh, yeah, I think it's in Navalos and Kievich, everything. Maybe not everything. Maybe there are a couple of, of projects that come from the moment when Renata was uh, an associate that, that, that was the author with Juan Herreros and me of uh, some projects. And this is, um, these are uh, uh, images that we care about. Uh, n n not like, like Taliban um, people, I mean, we, we, but I think that uh, many times when we talk about uh, thermodynamics, we are very generic, we are very specific. This is the long wave radiation all over the world, and this, this is it's a cartography, uh, but it, it, it points out very clearly in the dark red uh, which places of the world are losing heat, I mean, are re-radiating the heat gains during the day. They are re-radiating to the sky dome at night in ways that really allow us to think in, in resetting the buildings in, 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 in 24 hours, in day-night cycles instead of seasonal uh, cycles. And this makes a huge difference in the way you conceive the, this equation of uh, form matter flow. Um, uh, 
this is um, um, the, the it's a map it's a work in progress for the Harvard Center for Green Buildings and Cities uh, uh, is uh, it, it's, it points out the, in the main capitals of, of the world uh, the um, uh, capacity to uh, uh, imagine buildings that are 100% naturally ventilated, especially office and residential uh, buildings. And this is a cartography that immediately give us the... I mean, I think that this can, can seem a kind of uh, um, a secondary issue. For us, uh, this interest in thermodynamics is, is, is mainly based in the possibility of, of uh, forgetting the uh, uh, HVAC or HVAC paradigm and, and trying to reestablish a relationship with matter and form that allow us to really control, to design the flows of the air, to design the comfort in our places, or the comfort or the discomfort, whatever you want. Uh, so these are cartographies that immediately allow us to imagine one or another scenario. Uh, in a scenario where form and matter may mean something or when we have to really uh, continue working in the, let's say, in the modernist paradigm. Um, <coughs> this is the, I mean, when you want to, or your intention in, in your interest in, in thermodynamics is based in the possibility of, 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 of Going back to natural ventilation, but without any nostalgia, not mimicking the vernacular solutions that they are. I mean, we are orphan of the modernist paradigm, but we are orphan also of the modernist or the, or the vernacular typologies. I mean, for many reasons. Uh, when uh, you, you are working on this, the, uh, you have to be aware that the, the, your enemy is pollution. I mean, chemical or, or acoustic pollution or all kind of pollution. So. The other, the counterpart of, of our interest is this kind of crazy, especially in India and China, cartography that shows that the that, uh, uh, civilization is, is not that great business they sold us decades ago. Uh, and, the, and then they'll, don't read this, this is too much. Uh, uh, <laughs> the, uh, this, these um, schemes are, are another aspect that we have been interested in when we began, from the moment we began to, to be interested in thermodynamics, which is the, the use of program and people and machines as, as, uh, as a material. As, as an integral part of this equation of form, matter, and flow. Uh, so there are like the division among uh, sinks and sources, he, uh, programs that uh, uh, um, need to dissipate the heat gains and programs that need to, uh, some heat gains to, to, to bring uh, uh, inside the space uh, these heat gains, allow us to imagine uh, sandwiches or cocktails, if you want, of programs that uh, transfer and create uh, rings of interchange. So many of the ideas we are dealing with when we work with uh, uh, mixed-use developments uh, are, are uh, trying to organize these loops or these rings, internal rings of interchange among different uh, things and sources, uh, different parts of programs, and rings of interchange among the exterior climate and the interior climate, and, and, and making, obviously, bypasses among these two rings. This is, I mean, and this creates a topology that is, in this lower part, the onion-like, the, the multi-layer, the gradient, uh, the diagonal, the intrusion, all these <coughs> are different, different ways to, to uh, uh, relate uh, the, the different activities uh, that have become mm, a kind of new topology for us. And this is, I'm trying to, to explain the principles we work with. And, and <laughs> I'm sorry to be so pretentious. Uh, and and these, are, these are fake. I mean, these are fake parallelisms, but they are beautiful. Uh, the, the, among the heat exchangers and historical or vernacular architectures that really we can imagine uh, that they perform like this. I mean, you all of us know, I, mean, I don't know, I know, I know you come from many countries. Uh, everyone in his or her country 
knows vernacular architecture that uh, doesn't need all the all the uh, radiators or all, all the HB systems that we are using now and, and that perform quite well. Um, and they are beautiful, they are amazing, and they use the, the less expensive resources, those that are at hand, etc. Cetera, et cetera. The idea is, is to imagine our architecture um, like in between. I mean, we don't, we don't pretend to be the upper part and we don't pretend to be the lower part. We, we pretend to be like the letters in between, not like, like exactly in between, floating in the middle of, of these two. So this is the idea of the monster. The, uh, trying to design things that at the same time they establish a, a, a link with the history of our discipline which is amazing and so beautiful that uh, we cannot forget and at the same time trying to understand the performance of these equations of form, matter and flow in order to create a real um, thermal engines when we design our prototypes. Uh, yeah, this is beautiful, no? This is the thermos of, Car of Caracalla or the Cordoba Mosque, no? and uh, well, and these are like <coughs> uh, um, the monsters. The, 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 uh, this is a technique. It's not the only technique, but it's the technique that we probably uh, have uh, cultivated more intensively in the last years. The technique of teaching is is like uh, proposing the students to forget about. Uh, uh, forget about REM colas, basically, and, and for one term, and and uh, and try to uh, uh, to really uh, uh, design uh, prototypes without uh, cliches, without uh, taking account of the cliches or the images that everyone has in his her mind, and trying to really invent structures and create understand the differences among conductivity, radiation, convec convection, and create like uh, monsters that uh, uh, establish some uh, relationship among the material, the, the form and the flow. I'm not going to explain them, but these are, ob it's om almost obvious, this is about ventilation, cross ventilation in fact, not buoyancy. This is about buoyancy, and this is about thermal lag and mass. And these are about uh, game buoyancy, uh, yeah, both of them. In a way, uh, all these projects, I mean, uh, we try to uh, make the students understand the basics of thermodynamics and, and instead of trying to uh, create, uh, as, as is typical in the first, uh, uh, let's say, innocent approaches, to get, instead of, of trying to create a mixture of all of them, trying to uh, rank list them and rank them and in order to just go to the uh, ingredient, to the equation that really performs in, in a better way inside program, etc. Practice. This is the, the practice uh, from the moment we became uh, Avalos Senkiewicz. Is, is, uh, uh, it looks like a, a lot, but in reality it's full of co uh, commissions that were fake or failed and, 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 and competitions that we lost. So this is the reality for every studio, so, so, so I don't have any, any problem in confessing that we don't win all the competitions. We win one of seven, one of eight, which is a lot. It's a lot. Uh, so, uh, mixed use. I have uh, uh, brought, I mean, this, I made this uh, division for, I mean, remember, a Harvard Business School. So I had to, to create a kind of organization. I said, three things that I can, three messages. One is mixed use. Uh, uh, the other is, is uh, um, art, culture. I, I don't know. I, I think it, I wrote culture. Uh, buildings dedicated to, to culture, education or art or museums, etc. And libraries, etc. And the other is, is uh, Hybrids, combinations of uh, that we cannot distinguish if they are landscape, architecture, environmental, and and they create a kind of hybrid uh, condition. So this is probably these uh, these three aspects are the ones that we are probably more uh, solid. If I can say this word, this is a long time ago. Uh, it was when one of the first projects that Renata designed in the office as the, uh, the, the author of, of, of the project. In, in is the uh, international competition we won in Canary Islands in a beautiful in Las Palmas in a beautiful setting in in just the ism that uh, divides uh, the port. 
that connects with Latin America historically and nowadays and the, one of the best beaches of Canary Islands in the narrowest part a, a public private um, uh, development uh, a hybrid uh, uh, sorry uh, a mixed use uh, development um, this is the two red because it's not a tower that looks like but it's not uh, uh, that uh, immediately you can distinguish that uh, is not establishing uh, properly a dialogue with the urban fabric more in terms of scale and color with the volcanoes that surround and give the, its specific uh, form uh, to the geography of the city. This is the, 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 division, of the division of the program. The program is, is, is commercial. Uh, Partially had to be given to the, the local authorities, the blue, green, whatever the color it is up there to the left, is office space, and the yellow is residential, the orange is, uh, is orange, well, it's, it's brown, in the, it's, it's different the color I see, the one is, well, anyway, uh, it's a, a public facility, the car park, uh, retail, etc. Um, the, the basic thing is that the, they had, uh, as everywhere in Spain, but all over the world, I, I'm noticing that it's uh, exactly the same. When a urban designer uh, creates a kind of, of mixed use, it's always two symmetric towers, boom, maybe a podium, boom. No, it was the, the, the urban design. We, we decided to go flat, uh, fat and, and, and low with the office, connecting with the scale of the city and very slender and to the tallest we could uh, with the residential so they are it's a kind of periscope that looks to the city and is, is put up on top of the facility and the MEP or mechanical space so, so the first apartment enjoys the views on the port and the and the and the beach and the city and the volcanoes everything and and the main thing we created a Piazza, plaza, uh, a real public space uh, in between both of them that uh, was not uh, part of the program. So uh, we use this technique, very, very old, uh, the Brisoleil, uh, a light one, and, and the palette of the volcanoes and in terms of color, and, and a division that could avoid any reading any clear reading of the scale. No? So in a way it looks much, much more uh, tall than it is and it has been part of uh, sorry, uh, monographs of uh, skyscrapers that this has like 70 or 80 uh, uh, meters high. And uh, I remember one in A plus U that the, uh, the smallest, the second smallest was 250. And so uh, meters high. So, so it, it, we we really are very proud of being included in, in monographs of the skyscrapers with s such a small thing. And obviously, I mean, this is the space. Uh, this is the it's a museum of tourism, by the way. And and the the palette and the uh, the mor morphology is very much based in in the in some kind of uh, tropicalism, if if you want, in some cliches. I don't have any problem in in in, in using this kind of. Uh, devices and <coughs> these were the first uh, clients and they kindly allow our photographer to make this beautiful photography uh, and this is another one that we have made like uh, in uh, like uh, six months or seven months ago um, uh, uh, mixed use office um, uh, labs, residential, retail, uh, two blocks. The only uh, was able to construct the peripheric uh, ring, and <coughs> and uh, oh, sorry, <laughs> and well, uh, well, I I'm sure that many of you know that Shenzhen has a kind of tropical weather, super humid, monsoon, and and well, blah blah. Um, uh, the, the we divided the, the, the strategy in two uh, main uh, strategies. For the public space, we had to relay um, shadow and, and um, uh, dehumidifying water walls and cross ventilation. Uh, um, so what we did was to cut the periphery uh, ring 
in ways that allow the, the three, you have the kind of basic rows of wings here with the three directions of the uh, main directions of the wind in this part of the city. So the cats are really uh, like uh, trying to allow uh, in every moment of the year uh, this wind enter into these spaces. These spaces are uh, constructed. In every column uh, we have a tree. So uh, we create a kind of artificial forest and the water walls that you will see now. And in below this we have uh, the retail space that is conditioned by the uh, roof and the water walls. It is completely passive. And then, well, this is more. This is the program. This and, and uh, they, they are, as probably some of you know, I mean, the, still in China, the deepness of the base is brutal. It's really brutal. When in North Europe, we have offices that have like base of six meters or seven meters. Here we cannot go less than 15 to 20 meters. So the, we had two problems. One was natural light. The other was to avoid too much heat gains. So we use this kind of patios in the middle section and this kind of chimneys that perform in two different ways in summer and winter. If we can say summer and winter. So it's, it's when the temperature of the exterior is higher than the temperature of the interior or when the temperature of the exterior is lower than the temperature of... Uh, and then there is a kind of updraft uh, when it's higher and, and, and downdraft that is facilitated by cool uh, drops of water that obviously is not passive. You have to pay energy to, to produce this. It's a kind of fridge. But you can create a kind of uh, passive uh, downdraft uh, with the wind uh, in temperatures that uh, allow you to have some comfort. And this is the scheme of the, uh, the whole uh, uh, project. With uh, Here you see the interior uh, and the water walls uh, of the car park, of the, of the, of the, uh, the interior park, sorry. <coughs> this again, this water is below 18, 18 Celsius degrees and, and its role is obviously acoustic and, and, and about the beauty of water, etc. But mainly is the, the role is to condensate, to the, con the condensation of the humidity in the environment, dehumidifying the environment, uh, increases immediately the uh, comfort sensation. Uh, museums begin in the uh, in ateliers. As everyone knows, it was like this for in the 17th century, 18th century, 19th century, 20th century, and 21st century. We made this very small in a completely different climate than Shenzhen. Uh, this very, very small and, and, and uh, atelier for, for Albert Oellen, a uh, uh, well-known German artist. Uh, in, 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 in the German part of, of, of Switzerland, in the high in the mountains. And uh, it's uh, totally passive, it's based in geothermal, uh, as many of the constructions, it's not a kind of heroic thing, it's something that they are used to. And, but obviously uh, form and light and uh, materials help to do so, like having a lot of the volume in, inside the earth, having the skylights oriented to the south, and, and having materials that are like, uh, like wood uh, and, um, and Mm, newspaper uh, paper m mixed with sal as the insulation system uh, uh, that create this kind of, of environment uh, uh, which is very basic, very cheap by the way and, and amazingly comfortable all over the year and that takes uh, some of the heat gains with the windows but also the natural light that is uh, uh, and then we, we have just screens that fall down when the sun dry is very heavy and the painter doesn't want it and that's it. I mean, it's not that. In Spain we have made some ateliers for painters are always to the north and we decided to change and it works exactly the same but changing completely the orientation. And this is, you see, uh, yeah, uh, the, the, the most difficult part of this construction was to get the, the low quality of the wood uh, uh, in Switzerland. It was really difficult. They were polishing so much that it looked like plastic, you know this plastic 
lattices that look like uh, it was, and they were saying, no, but you will have to paint it every year. I said, it's a painter. I mean, it's a, it's a famous painter. He has a lot of uh, TAs. <laughs> and, 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 but the texture is fantastic, I think. And uh, this kind of cantilever. It's, it's, it's so simple that it doesn't need, like, but we wanted to work with very simple things with the triangular geometry, the rectangular geometry, and, and simple things. And this is the, I think it's the only project in Barcelona I will show to, to, to tonight uh, that I love, the Tapies Foundation. Uh, 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 modernist structure that was uh, firstly uh, conditioned as an art museum uh, in, in by a local architect in, in let's say in the peak of the modernist uh, era uh, epoch with all the gadgets of the postmodernist uh, vocabulary and it was a, a, a really a, a nightmare uh, for every artist not for us uh, they complain especially the owner and and it didn't, after many years, it didn't uh, adapt at all to the new regulations on fire, egress, uh, um, uh, all kind of things. Anyway, uh, it needed a renovation, and, we, and the, the client and we wanted to update it in many ways. Uh, <coughs> this is the, the, well, the location is very close to La Pedrera, Paso de Gracia, etc. It's the first uh, industrial structure in the example. Uh, it means that uh, it's the first one to um, to fulfill the expectations of Cerda, to put together residential construction and industrial, clean industrial constructions in the in the city. Uh, it was a, a, a printer industry. This is these are the original photos. It's the typical loft with the skylights and cast iron uh, thin columns uh, um, uh, and 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 a kind of some kind of. of Modernist decoration here and there. Our project was very basically to return to the to, to take out all the new postmodernist layers and return to the original building. The original building itself fulfilled almost all the regulations that the postmodernists didn't, uh, but we had to add some. And at the same time, we had to increase the size, so we decided to create the pavilion in the backyard and to wrap the whole thing in the skylights, so we minimize it, <coughs> uh, the uh, heat in, in exchanges. As you know, and more in Barcelona, that is a humid city, a museum has to maintain the environmental conditions uh, the whole year stable. They have a, an amazing collection there. So uh, the, in this case, what we wanted to create is a kind of igloo that was able to stabilize uh, and minimize the heat interchanges. Um, and doing so, we were able to increase 2,500 square meters, the, 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 the average, uh, the footage of the, of the building without changing any, uh, uh, any machine, uh, any uh, HVAC system. So in a way, we were saving a lot of m money doing so, but at the same time, our intention was to recover the original mo modernist building for public activities, transferring all the administrative staff to, to the new pavilion in the back. No? So uh, this allowed us to, to work in a, in a wonderful mm, situation where you cannot control any kind of, uh, you cannot organize functionally the museum. The museum is a given, and you have to move more or less across different departments and look at them. It's, it's not just this uh, kind of old-fashioned idea of, of Louis Kahn, no? the server and the service uh, uh, spaces. Uh, everything is the same. It's a center of production, and you see the production of culture in all its complexity when you visit the building, and this was a kind of amazing gift for us. Uh, so uh, <coughs> our work was try to return to the high postal uh, room that was uh, hidden in like pseudo uh, Roman uh, walls and and recover the the tiles of uh, the pavers of wood the small uh, thick uh, uh, wood uh, pavements that were normal in, in in Barcelona in the 19th century 
and, and, and doing so we recover uh, I mean for me it's, I mean I'm a maniac of, of acoustics uh, uh, to recover the sound uh, of the, of, which is ten times more comfortable not only the temperature of color but the sound of the building and how things sound when you move no? um, well I'm trying to minimize the impact of, of, of other things no? uh, in ways that uh, more or less uh, give the, uh, the visitor the possibility of seeing the first industrial modernist building of Barcelona in in good ways. No? At the same time, they see the exhibitions, etc., etc. This was the, the way they store um, paper that is and was uh, the library, the the, 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 yeah, the library, and the natural light was recovered uh, thanks to the use of fabrics that, that allow you to, to have natural light without UV rays and, and that's it. I mean it's not that difficult nowadays and, and the, all the artists that have gone there, all those that are alive, have, I mean you can make it dark but no one, as far as I know, has decided to go dark. Everyone loves natural light because they paint with natural light. I mean <laughs> it's, just, it's that simple. Uh, well these are images and this is the uh, the, the pavilion, yeah. I mean, uh, well, the right part is the pavilion. The, 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 the left one is, is the original building. And we, we decided to use the same logics, and not only the logics, but the basement. I mean, we had some, some foundations, so, so we really, uh, saving money, had to mimic the, the logics of the structure and made it with plates of steel um, and the typical um, corrugated deck. In the, in the in the slabs um, and nothing else basically. I mean, uh, it's, it's really one clear glass and and, and full stop. I mean, no, no. it was a, it, it was really cheap uh, uh, in terms of of, of the budget, uh, uh, oh, and and I think that it was a kind of a great success in in our, in in the way it was. The building, the existing building, became part of the uh, patrimony that could be exhibited in a visit to the Tapis Foundation. And uh, this was the last uh, sculpture that uh, Tapis made that completes the, the, the relationship with the exterior one that was uh, so amazingly beautiful. Um, and this is the project we are, uh, the museum we are um, doing, uh, we are constructing now in Chuhai. Uh, that in a way uh, has memories of of, of, uh, of has a lot of memories of Barcelona. I have to say, uh, I don't want to be a kind of diplomatic. It's the reality. Hong Kong, Zhuhai, Macau, Shenzhen, a, a, a new bridge, the longest of the world, uh, will be finished this at the end of this year or the beginning of the next. It's almost there. I don't know when it's going to be open. Much sooner than our building, and it's 70 kilometers. Uh, connecting Hong Kong and Chuhai and Macau. Uh, and, and our building is exactly in the point where the bridge will land uh, and in the intersection among uh, uh, Chuhai in the upper part, Macau uh, here on my head. Uh, this is the uh, image of, of the site. The site is very ugly except because of this, because it's the edge. The, the edge of, with Macau is the most crowded of, of China. Uh, and the, the building itself was, uh, the competition of the building was, it's, it's the first museum of Zhuhai. Zhuhai is one of these cities that has now a lot of money uh, of the government to, to really increase its size. There is a new uh, extension of one million and a half uh, inhabitants and, and uh, in a way it's one of the 15 or 16 cities that has been really funded uh, in this for the next 10, 12 years. Uh, the first museum uh, uh, for us was a kind of interesting uh, um, a provocation. We didn't want to go to the black box. Uh, we think that the climate is fantastic, even if it is too hot and too humid. It's like a little bit hotter than Barcelona. Uh, and, and rainy in summer, this is worse. And, and uh, but we wanted to make it exactly the reverse of a black box. Uh, it was white, for, for, uh, it has a patio instead of, of being uh, in the middle to protect it uh, from the humidity and the wind. 
uh, as a public space where you can extend the 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 the, 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 the activities of the museum. It, it has these trees uh, protecting and behaving as as a real HVAC constructed uh, with with uh, mechanical shapes, and the whole roof is a podium to enjoy the views on the. Uh, uh, on the city, the bridge, the sea, the region, Macau, uh, n night and day. And uh, I'm saying that it's very based in, in, in Barcelona because uh, uh, it's, uh, we use uh, clearly the reference to Gaudí in this, and in, in the La Pedrera. The fact that you can have a kind of, of interesting uh, um, feature uh, in, in a museum that is the roof when it rises uh, in a very low city, by the way. Um, well, this is it. So it's a public a roof. At night, it uh, will be fulfilled with activities. And these were the basic drawings of the uh, uh, competition. And it has a car park, uh, it has a, a retail space in the basement, very small, and then has like the patios and the trees. Well, galleries around the, uh, some education. I mean, the program, the typical program of of a of a, a, a museum is like uh, 28,000 square meters of museum and 20 something of car park. And uh, this is the, the relationship. But the, the whole idea is that these these uh, trees uh, perform as, as thermal engines, and not only because they obviously provide some shadow, but because they create downdrafts and updrafts. They behave as chimneys that balance the, the, the temperature, and during the day, especially uh, during the morning till noon, uh, they will be able, according to our super experts, uh, to to really reduce uh, dramatically the humidity. And the, 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 and the perceived temperature will be reduced to 8 Celsius degrees less than the exterior, according to their numbers. Let's see. I mean, I'm confident that I, I, I never. I mean, I never give too much credit to these numbers. I don't care. I, 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 I think that is more important the fact that the, the logics. The fantastic thing is that the physical logics. Uh, uh, I mean, the, the, the trees. Uh, are not trees, were conceived as chimneys, but these chimneys uh, had to adopt, because of the flow and the way you avoid turbulence, had to avoid this geometry that fits exactly with the drago tree that you can see in Spain in Canary Islands. That is, by the way, the only tree, uh, I, now, now I am an expert in dragos, the, the only one that as our tree is fitted by the canopy. Not by the roots uh, are structural only. The, the, the food comes from the canopy, exactly like in our case. So it's not the, the, there are no casualties in nature. Um, well, I can explain this more carefully, but I think this, the idea is there. And the domes are create a kind of, of impact in the in the the formation of, of the. Some complain about the difficulties of, of exhibiting. I have seen. Uh, I don't. Com I, I don't think it's a problem. I'm sure that it will not be. A, 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 at least for artists, will not be. Maybe for creators. And um, and well, this is the roof. Will not be white because you you can have too much glare. It will be grey. The rest will be white, white concrete. Um, and this is the effect of of this instrument. This is under construction. This is the person that is calculating the trees. <laughs> uh, well, okay, and and then I'm I'm going to finish with two projects. Uh, I don't know if they are. Uh, uh, well, this has a lot of trees, uh, <laughs> but it's it's a beautiful setting in also in China, uh, a campus, uh, for a, a kind of university, a, a laboral university. It has like uh, the library, and it's it's a beautiful place that has very cold winters with north wind and very hot summers. So the whole thing, the, the whole arrangement of, of the uh, well, the, the whole arrangement of the of the uh, of, of our classrooms, uh, uh, units, residential units, library, uh, sport facilities, auditorium, etc is based in avoiding the north wind and again, maximizing the exposition to the south with protection to the sun and, and pivoting around the, 
the, um, the library that comes from another project that we made for the city and didn't win a competition. We always move uh, our projects from one city to another. We don't have any problem. All of them fit quite well in the context. If there is any discussion on context, you will find me an enemy. I, I mean, I all, mostly all the competitions we have won are in the third or fourth try to introduce a, a building that was planned for Bonn and then went to Israel and then went to Granada and finally fit in Medellin. So this is context for me. Um, uh, uh, this, this one in particular uh, has a kind of, of, this thing has become a cliche, uh, but I think that in this case it's more interesting, it's a kind of the, the, in, the egress stair in reality become a kind of, 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 of path to an observatory deck uh, on the beautiful settings that are around us uh, that collects water to, to fulfill the vegetation and to, to irrigate the, the, the vegetation. The vegetation. The, there are other things that I'm... Um, and the whole structure with these cuts, it, it's, it's composed in order to uh, uh, adopt equilibrium, but in ways, we have made the cuts in ways that allow us to minimize the relationship with the sun in the orientations that are worse, like west and east, and maximizing it in north and, and having a, an average. In, so in a way, is the structure is, is not only performing as a, um, uh, in its structural role, but also is dosifying the amount of natural light in order to establish a good balance among uh, uh, of energy consumption, no? a passive balance. These are the, the essential units. The pines, the dunes, and the sea, and the observatory. And the drawings of the, the object. It's, it's a strange mm, object, <laughs> also in its geometry. Uh, but I like the idea of pivoting and creating a, 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 su a succession of, of different patios and uh, uh, courtyards. So in a way, it's a very traditional, let's say, monastery-like uh, organization, uh, but adapted uh, with inflections and geometrical organizations that, that uh, in try to, to really uh, be much more uh, adapted to the local uh, thermal conditions. And this is the high-speed train station uh, that uh, is the, now we will be beginning, I'm so happy that we will be able to begin the second part, the bus station, uh, because now it's a kind of slope that uh, ends, uh, is for, uh, I mean, to suicide yourself if you want, it's perfect because you just can fall down, now it will be completed. But uh, uh, this, you see, this is, no? and now it will be completed to do the other side. <coughs> It has taken a lot of years with the crisis to get the funds for this. It was a kind of international competition and that uh, uh, we won against all Rotterdam because all the offices of Rotterdam were there, uh, and except us that were in Madrid. And it was the, the main reason why we won it because it, it was because we understood that in Logroño the main fact was not the station as an object, but the fact that with the train, the high-speed train, that hasn't come, by the way, but we have the tracks, uh, with the high-speed train, uh, the, the whole uh, uh, functionality of the city would change. Uh, uh, ring belt will appear when formerly we had a kind of wall that divided north and south. And the, let's say the kind of uh, um, uh, change in, in the way of using the and perceiving the city was the main thing. So we decided not to do properly a station, but a slope, a hill, hidden in, you see here the section and the plan. Left side is bus station, right side is train station, hidden in the, the, the two infrastructures and connected in uh, and maintained it. Uh, uh, in terms of energy by the solar collectors of the five <coughs> small towers, but big for Logroño, small for other city, uh, tower, residential towers that uh, surround um, the project. Um, the, the thing is that uh, due to the fact that we had uh, a lot of uh, complex um, uh, infrastructure in the, uh, uh, in the basement, uh, 
we couldn't have a kind of the typical ipostel uh, uh, room, the perfect one. We had to be like opportunistic in the way we located columns. We couldn't, ha if we wanted to have a green, a real park, uh, able to have a kind of rock concert or whatever uh, on top of it, we couldn't make a kind of kind of Calatrava again uh, dome. We had to to have columns, and the columns are. Uh, never more than 18 meters away one of the other. So it's really cheap. Uh, and and this uh, gave us uh, the geometry, uh, a kind of stereometric no, uh, geometry, a triangular shape that uh, characterized the structural organization. You see you see the columns, where are, how they are divided, how chaotically they are divided. But also, uh, uh, they g I mean this triangular shape gave us the, the pattern with Teresa Gali. We made the park with Teresa. I'm sure that she has come here. Uh, um, and if you don't know her, uh, every 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 park we are doing and have ever designed has been always with her. Um, uh, the pattern uh, became a kind of parterre, no, uh, of, of of the of, of of the whole project. Uh, the, the, this is the non-existing facade. This is the beginning of, of a dome of 70 meters of span, spanning 70 meters that will come soon, hopefully. But this is the interior, the exterior, the paths. I like this photo. I like this couple, <laughs> and uh, and the the interior. And as you can see. Uh, all these facets, are the, according to the angle, uh, and when you move, you pass through. Some of them become transparent, and you see through, and you see all the stuff of the structure, ducts, etc. And the other remain opa opaque. And this creates a kind of, uh, I mean, it's avoiding the, the extruded section principle, which is a section and 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 and, and extend it till the limit. It's uh, all about your movement and your body and how you experience the space. And very similarly, it's happening uh, in the upper part. Uh, um, and this is the way you go into the uh, the, the, the tracks, um, the trains, <coughs> which is really spectacular. Uh, it, this is a kind of uh, extruded aluminium uh, commercial patent that is very well known, made by Cortizo. Everyone can buy it. It's not expensive, and it's amazing the effect it creates. Um, and the skylights that the engineers didn't want to, to add, but that were amazingly important for the people waiting and having natural light. And uh, <coughs> you see here, here is the, la the, the, the connection with the, the tunnel here, and these are the skylights that are um, uh, uh, also expanded the sunrise with this kind of kaleidoscopic stainless steel mirrors creating a pattern uh, that re is re replicated along. The, 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 the engineers wanted to make it blind and full of tubes, and we decided that it was 10 times cheaper and, and, and less um, and much more beautiful to have just skylights that could just pop up when, when there's need of ventilation, and that's it. It took us like one year and a half to persuade them, and, and, and it works, I mean, incredibly well. Uh, the skylights also can become lamps at night, um, and this is um, the space. This is small. It's a very small, but we are very. I mean, we like the idea of having the grotto inside the park. So, so it's a kind of picturesque feature. No, that, that both are are really uh, uh, performing quite well. Uh, I mean, uh, when when people ask me about uh, the, the the qualification, if it has a kind of lead or whatever. I said this is uh, this is open. I mean, the train at the end of the tunnel is is is, is just this is the land. No, so, it, it, but it, we have like uh, 60 or 70 centimeters of of earth and and, and and plants. And the only thing I know is that thanks to the crisis, we didn't have to measure or to monitorize anything. It, the the HBA system has never been uh, switched on and no one has complained. So it, it has to work, definitely, at least. And, and exactly the same with uh, lightning. I mean, the, the rules of, of the people of Adif uh, force these people to, to, to light on the lights when the, the trains are be five minutes before they come and five minutes after they leave. But there is no need at all in the, in the, in the room uh, or, or in the tracks. 
and this is the reality of construction of, of this that I have I love this this the images that that show the dream of the architect no the quick and the speed of construction <laughs> but uh, I show more than this so the relationship among all the technologies that we have to use and the, all the complaints we have with engineers etc and the role of architecture in giving them presence and at the same time sense uh, or at least this is what I think they do and, and, <coughs> and character if you want so uh, and uh, this is why so many times we talk about the beauty of thermodynamics and, and the beauty of architecture as the main role of the architects I mean even if we are interested in other let's say obsessions as has been pointed out the main by far obsession we have is to try to make things beautiful and that's it, that's it. thank you <laughs> Thank you. Probably you want to make some, com some, dis some comments. Not very critical, please. Yeah. So thank you, Iñaki. Thank you for sharing your obsession of thermodynamics, architecture, and beauty with us this evening. <laughs> um, all potentially perfect for any context, as you say. Mm -hmm. um, I'd like to invite any members of the audience who might have any questions for Inyaki to raise their hand, so we can sort of... Anyone? Questions? Hi. Thank you for the uh, very inspiring uh, presentation. Uh, I have a quick question. Sometimes, or most times, when we are designing with uh, you know concepts of uh, uh, building physics, and we simulate and we kind of like design or predict, one thing, one parameter that we always leave is uh, the occupants, mm -hmm. and uh, it's very often that we see the actual occupants of the buildings not using the building as it was designed. So what happens in that like huge uh, floor plate, you put like a, a curtain wall in the middle and you just stop the flow of air and you have a really big problem and your concept is not working. Have you done any work on it, like post-occupancy studies or uh, uh, wrote like an essay about it or anything like that? Yeah, I would uh, like to hear your thoughts. Yeah, uh, yeah it's true. I mean, it's, it's true that you, you, you uh, prefix some facts and they can happen or not. I mean, that's the, and the reality is, uh, we know all of us that it changes much more than our numbers. Uh, uh, this is why um, the main concern uh, we have is about uh, um, uh, um, form. I can say form <laughs> as as the main, uh, and, and the second can be passive or 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 or, or the organization of matter uh, in passive terms. Because I, I think that with these two tools, we are able to, uh, in a way, to be immediately close or far away from the uh, comfort zone. In, in, in basically, we can really have some uh, uh, spaces that are decent in terms of their um, 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 uh, experience of the space. I mean, maybe you need to have the the coat as she has, uh, or, or, or 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 just the sweater, or not. That that you can survive. No, and you, what you are not going to be sweating like a stupid guy, uh, like because the whole thing is sealed and and there is 45 degrees and the glass is 80 or 85 Celsius degrees. Uh, I think that this is the reality. I mean, I'm not a kind of fan. You have seen, I, 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 uh, there were a couple of slides with, with some kind of simulation, very basic, Basari, I think it was, Diva or Basari, very basic, uh, uh, that sometimes we use. Sometimes we just ask, uh, but it, I mean, the funny thing is that the best experts we know in structural uh, calculation or in thermodynamics, they even use this simulation. They don't use them. I mean, you go to Xavier Aguiló or to Agustillo Viol, and he doesn't need any of this. Obviously, they use it. But to decide the typology, 
to decide the material, the organization of, of, of the structural matter, etc. I mean, it's, it's a wisdom that you have to, I mean, it's experience, knowledge, talent, intuition, whatever you want. But it's something that you have to have. And it's exactly the same with thermodynamics. I mean, we have had to make uh, calculations just for the clients, honestly. So uh, I think that there is a kind of mythology that, and, and in fact, with uh, our work with the students, uh, tries to be very careful in, in not uh, leaving them to use too quick and too soon any kind of, of ecotech, diva, or whatever, to the to the energy is, is, is nice because you can the flows of energy you can visualize very very quickly but uh, we try to them to, to develop a kind of, of more intuitive approach and a more basic hey, even <laughs> I see you and and, uh, and and try to really learn the basics so I always say that uh, and some of the experts in the room uh, will for sure agree with me that uh, in many cases, thermodynamics is a dead language, especially in the States. An American child, and I don't know how many Americans are here, has always lived in HVAC, in the car, in the school, at home. And they don't know that opening one window here and one window there, maybe you have some, some movement of the air. I mean, it's really a dead language. So trying to develop a kind of intu uh, intuitive approach to the basics of buoyancy, convective, radiation, com um, con conduction, it's 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 much much more important for an architect. Yeah. Okay, thank you very much for the for the inspiring lecture. And uh, I want to ask you if like uh, these strategies on thermodynamics, on thermodynamic beauty that you are using on all your buildings, uh, do you think that in a way they have to be like transparent for the people that are living in the building, or if there is like a uh, a way that uh, that people can participate on on, on this uh, beauty or understand it or be a part a ro have a role on this on yeah. this uh, strategy. We, I mean, I'm I'm very pra I'm, I'm, I'm pragmatic. As I think every architect. I mean, I think that there are cases and cases. Uh, uh, it depends on the context, the client. Uh, I mean, you, you immediately know if there is a sensibility, uh, and they can really be interested in, in I don't know, moving the the old lattices and systems like this, and and they really understand that with a very s small amount of ac activity, personal activity, you can increase your comfort, and you can also experience variation, and because it's not about comfort, it's the texture, about a variety of textures you know, in, in your skin. So, uh, uh, but there are others that, 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 that will not do it, I mean, basically, and, and you know it. So, and or they don't want to spend money in these things. So we try to uh, 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 in, uh, make some pedagogy with our clients, but not to till the point that we lose them. I mean, honestly, and and this pedagogy is based in in exactly what I have said: no? the pleasures of enjoying the textures of a variation in, in terms of light and, and temperature and humidity along the day and in different areas of the house, instead of having the steady uh, comfort zone of the of the charts. No? Uh, well, sometimes works, sometimes not. I mean, <laughs> this is why we lose a lot of competitions. I mean, because <laughs> that's it. I mean, but I think that uh, words are important. Words are important. Uh, I, when uh, partially, I have to say that partially our relative success nowadays in China has come after persuading them that uh, uh, the new normality the Chinese president talked about that they understood as a return to the purely the more formalist, historical, fastest, I would say, uh, repertoire, uh, was not that. That the thing was returning to the natural, to the experience, to your body. And, and to, to construct uh, using form and matter in intelligent ways. And this is giving us, I mean, uh, more than, I mean, you can, I can show them the flows, etc., and they don't care. I mean, they really don't care a shit. So, but if you talk about this, so sometimes there, 
our profession is, is, you see a plan, a drawing of an architect. It's not just a drawing, it has text and numbers, and are so important as the drawing. No? In par I mean, and it's, it's the same, I and mean, we have to communicate ideas. We have to persuade. Hi. Um, the question I'm going to ask is not so different as the first one, but maybe I was not satisfied with the answer. So, um, <laughs> okay. Um, as you know, we, we very much like your work, and I think maybe in Spain you're always ahead of everyone writing about that topic and, and actually building it. So, since you're so ahead, uh, I'd like to ask you some questions about the, the assessment of the work. So. Uh, it seems that in the last project you showed, the one in, in China, the towers, um, you focus a lot, not, not so much on the use, but really physically how the building will produce condensation and, and these things, so you can have, uh, you, you know it's going to work, because you can actually make calculations. In the tower in, um, uh, in Canary Island, um, it seems that it's very important, the programmation, the program inside. For example, you have a library tucked in, a, a between. What, what, how do you plan for if they don't want to have a library? Because I'm sure that the library uses a lot of light, a computer, so it releases a lot of heat. What if they want to, in the future, not use that as a library, but more housing? How do you convince them, or how do you allow the architecture to be flexible and thermodynamic at the same time? Well, I, I, I probably will have nothing to say and no one will ask me. This is the reality of our profession. No? And uh, we abandon our children and that's it. I mean, our relationship is really dry. Uh, uh, we are very bad parents. <laughs> and <laughs> and so because the reality is this. But I think that um, the more um, it becomes a kind of, of, of uh, um, shared knowledge as it will, uh, it will be easier and uh, easier for the urban planners or the urban designers to uh, fix uh, cocktails of programs. If we really take seriously the mandate of Europe, the, the zero emissions thing, which is unbelievable. I mean, doesn't exist. I mean, it's like the creation of energy. I mean, they are inventing the, the wheel that is a square. I mean, I, I, I cannot buy this idea. But uh, if we want to have a kind of an approach to, a, let's say, a, a, a well-balanced use of energy, uh, because I think it's the only thing we can do. I mean, it's, it's like this. It's the reality. I mean, it's God. It's not me. I mean, <laughs> who invented the, the principles of thermodynamics? Uh, if we want to do this, I think that uh, it has to be uh, uh, made uh, through a shared knowledge, and it has to be made uh, through the use, uh, the, the change in the way we perceive the mixed use uh, as, uh, as, a as a typology. Um, much of the work we do in academia is to compare the standard mixed-use program that all of us know how it is, you know, the hotel, the, I don't know, the restaurant that goes around and the retail and the, apart the, the super big, uh, expensive apartment on top, all this gradient of activities, I mean, in relationship with infrastructures and the, and the street level uh, and the views. And, uh, uh, if we uh, use the principles of thermodynamics, we have an, a different topology. This, these topologies that I have shown, the onion-like, the intrusion, and we have like a series of, 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 of them. And we need, in all cases, a high-quality source of heat gains, which means that we need, in all these programs, at least one of them has to have like a, a source of, of heat gains that is around 80, 100 Celsius degrees. I mean, this is really, has, or even more. No, it has to be really, really uh, oven or something that, uh, that, or a district heating and cooling system, something that really cre can, can, be, can begin to be establishing the change of, 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 of from, from the hottest to the, to the coolest. No? And, and this, I mean, it's not like a panacea, it's not something that you can uh, relay on in all cases, but it's something that can modify the culture of, 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 
how program is understood. It's not only commercial, which is obvious, and I respect it. I mean, I respect developers a lot. They are my clients. Uh, but uh, uh, I think that we can add layers of complexity to the equations they have. And they listen. They listen because in, in a way they can save money also and become green. So, so it's something that, that uh, in the case of Canary Islands, uh, I mean, it's not that we, they didn't complain. It's that we couldn't even have any communication with the people that were dealing with the HVAC system. So we were completely separated. Of the, of, uh, so we didn't know uh, who were the designers till the, the building was under construction. So it's, it's I mean, you know, the, 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 it, this is the reality of our profession. We have to deal with that. So thank you very much, Iñaki. And maybe we'd like to give another round of applause to thank him. All right.